The Apple TV Plus original limited series Blackbird has come to its conclusion. So should you be binging this true crime drama? Jimmy Keen is sentenced to 10 years in a minimum security prison, but he cuts a deal with the FBI to befriend a suspected serial killer in a maximum security federal prison in order to elicit a confession from Larry Hall to find the bodies of his victims. We binged this over the weekend, and it's a fairly quick watch with only six episodes. And despite each of them being an hour long, I mean, we couldn't get to the next episode fast enough after the previous one ended. This stars Taron Egerton, Paul Walter Hauser, Ray Liotta, Sapita Moafi, and Greg Kinnear. Now, Edgerton plays Jimmy Keene, a convicted drug dealer who secures a bargain with the FBI and the prosecutors to basically switch from his low-key prison, where he has it very easy, and go to a maximum security federal prison under an assumed background just in order to get close to a serial killer suspect played by Paul Walter Hauser. The story is riveting, and it's told in present time for the most part, with a few flashbacks to give more context to whatever's being discussed. Now, while the story is quick to introduce us into the plot, the presentation, it's not rushed at all. This plays out with a patience that's captivating, where sometimes there's very little dialogue, with just a score playing over the character's movements. There's also a good deal of mystery and doubt that's built up within the story, thanks to a characteristic of Hauser's Larry Hall. Now, Hall is odd and needy, so a lot of the time we're not sure if his words can actually be trusted. And this creates an incredible amount of tension as the story goes along, because doubt, it's not a friend to investigators and prosecutors. Now, as riveting as the story is, this is very dialogue driven. So a ton of the narrative success or failure sits heavily on the shoulders of our actors. Greg Kinnear is great as a driven but frustrated investigator. Now, he's responsible for finding a body and then tying Hall to it. But then things get convoluted for the case. And I love the looks and the mannerisms that we get from Kinnear. He's not quite defeated, but he's so fed up with what has or hasn't happened in other counties where victims were found that could be tied to his case. Now, he's quiet in a lot of this. He's introspective, but still pushing through, believing that he's got the right guy. Sapita Moafi plays the FBI agent who recruits Keen for the prison swap. Now, she's no nonsense and comes across as gruff, but she's just assertive and not going to put up with crap. And the moments that she has with Edgerton's Keen are excellent at establishing not only her authority, but her mindset in accomplishing her goal. There's also a point where she's got to basically get into character for a visit with somebody, and we watch this extended scene of her sitting with a hurt, distressed, and almost crushed look to her. I mean, there's this level of maybe it's regret, maybe torment. I mean, it's definitely uncertainty, and I felt those from her. It surpassed watching somebody act to feeling it, and she killed it. Now, this might be the last performance we'll ever see Ray Liotta in. And he unfortunately passed away in the middle of the show's release. So I'm not sure if there were any reshoots or if maybe story edits had to happen just to remove him from the scenes that, you know, may not have totally been finished. But we get him throughout the show, which I thought was nice. Now, he's Jimmy Keen's dad. And I love that we get to hear that signature Leota laugh at one point in this. I mean, it's boisterous, almost aggressive, but there's also a joy to it. Leota performs awesomely as the elder Keen. Now, he's got medical issues and health problems, and I genuinely could believe the actions and his line delivery. There's also a reformed fierceness that we see. And in that, I mean that we can see a once very tough man who's now been humbled by age and health. And he's filled with regrets, but still has the desire to do better. Now, Leota has some very emotive eyes, and I think they're used effectively throughout this. All right, so Taron Edgerton has shed his British and Welsh accents to play an American from Chicago. I'm very impressed at how good he is with this. We get to see a massive transition in the character of Jimmy Keene, and Edgerton takes us on that ride step by step. He starts off incredibly cocky and arrogant, and then we watch Edgerton transform and mature as Keene. Now, I loved watching the struggle between impatience and objective, because Keen has to try and get close to Hall in order to gain confidence that then critical info could be shared about the crimes. There's a ticking clock to the story, and we see the mounting pressure building in Keen's eyes. But there are other obstacles that he's up against within the prison, and that anxiety and tension transfer from Edgerton straight through the screen to us in the audience. I was on edge, just as Keen was looking over his shoulders and waiting for bad things to happen. I mean, as they sometimes do inside prison walls. Don't ask me how I know. And we see so much growth from Keen in this that it's almost impossible not to be drawn to his character. And he's charismatic, witty, and very observant. And for as tough as he comes across, there are some moments in this that convey his humanity. Oh, they're so good. And when these were happening, I mean, the emotion, it's palpable and devastating. 
Now, I've deliberately saved talking about Paul Walter Hauser until now, because holy crap, just give this guy all the awards. I mean, Hauser is very similar in a lot of his roles with his mannerisms that are whispery and odd. I mean, sometimes he's shy or clumsy, and other times he's overly confident. But each time, he's able to create a character that is unique and intriguing, even if they're also abhorrent or despicable. Now, in this, as Larry Hall, Hauser is quietly menacing. I mean, the way in which he uses his lack of eye contact to enhance uncertainty, I thought it was brilliant. And just like with what the FBI and the detectives are experiencing, I found myself very wishy-washy in my confidence that Hall was the correct suspect. Hall is quirky, unsettling, even creepy throughout. But when we get to that finale, I mean, hold on to your butts, because Hauser transforms Hall into something that we have not seen from him, and I was almost drawn to applaud my TV. I mean, his performance is spellbinding. I couldn't tear my eyes away from the character, even though there were many times I wanted to purely out of discomfort. And there are also some darkly comedic moments with the performance too. Now, I laughed a couple of times because of mannerisms and line deliveries, even though I knew I shouldn't be laughing because the content was anything but humorous. I think it was more out of just discomfort. Now, Hauser is just so great at crafting Hall as somebody that messes with our emotions and then creates doubt. And in addition to the stellar performances, I mean, the show looks wonderful. The cinematography is enveloping with shots that work to convey claustrophobic loneliness, guarded fear, even unintentional beauty. There are some scenes within the prison that, while they don't make it inviting or even a place that we ever want to go, there's a calm and serenity to some of the framings that then conflict wonderfully with the dialogue and the ideas that are being presented. And some of my favorite shots are when we'll see the actors in the center of the frame and we get to see all of the emotion that they're carrying in their eyes. I mean, it's a great way to connect us with the characters. And I think maybe the one negative that really stood out to me within this is that time is a bit indeterminate. I mean, especially as we watch Keen in prison trying to get closer to Hall. Has it been a day? A week? I don't know. I mean, this is kind of important because of the time constraint that is present within the story. But this lack of knowledge about time also helps to illustrate how time is kind of endless or just smushed together for the prisoners, where hours and days blend into one another as there's no real end in sight for a lot of those inmates. So overall, Blackbird is a gripping true crime drama with a case that is filled with doubt and intrigue. The pacing works to move us efficiently through the story, allowing us to become enthralled in the mysteries that's surrounding the truth of the crimes. The acting is convincing and captivating, but what makes this a standout are the performances by Taryn Edgerton and Paul Walter Hauser, with Hauser creating a character that is terrifying in a quiet and disturbing way. This man deserves massive praise and attention for what he brings to the screen, which I think makes this limited series a must-see. There's sex, nudity, a ton of profanity, and a massive amount of violence. I give Blackbird five out of five couches. What's a true crime drama that you love? Let me know about it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.